Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. I hope you're all well and staying safe in these tough times. Now in this video we're going to be learning how to build an advanced train here in Stormworks. We'll go over all the components you'll need, show you exactly how to get everything set up, how to add the engines, how to get the forward and reverse set up. I know this has been a highly requested video on my channel so I thought we'd go and do it. I will be showing you in another video in the future how to set up a master slave system for that train. So definitely keep an eye out on the channel for this week for that video. But if you're enjoying these videos, comment below and what else you'd like to see any of my future videos. While you're there, don't forget that like and subscribe button. Make a little bell icon to be notified of my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So all said, let's get straight into it and get started with this video. And kicking things off, we're back here at one of the train hangars on the mainland island. Now you can see just in front of us, I have got a little train base that we're going to be building with. Uh, and the nice thing is that we're actually going to show you how to build a properly working train here in Stormworks. We're not just going to show you how to take a box like this and add some jets on it and make it go. Uh, we'll make it. We'll show you exactly how to build the proper train here in Stormworks. Uh, so to build it up, all we have to do is go into the workbench and you can see I've just got a very simple straightforward base here uh, with the wheels underneath it. Both of the wheels are pointing forwards. Uh, that is quite important. Uh, make sure they are pointing in the same direction. Now you can start off by building your base. Uh, I've gone and made a 11 wide base. Usually the standard is usually around 11, 13. Uh, it's up to you or on the size you want to do, but usually 11 or 13 is normally the normal size here, depending on what type of train you're going to be building. Now, the first thing we want to do is we actually want to make the train go forwards and backwards. And to do that, I find the easiest way is to have a, a diesel electric system. Now you can go all diesel, you can go all electric. This is completely up to you. Uh, as I said, I prefer to just go with a all diesel electric system. We're going to be starting off by using a medium motor. Medium motors are usually enough to get our engines going, uh, depending on the weight, one is enough. You might want to add a second one. Once again, this is completely up to you. Um, also, please bear in mind, this, this uh, tutorial is not meant to be showing you how to build a really good looking train. It's showing you how the basics of how to get a train working. So this might not look that great. So please just bear that in mind. The first thing, as I said, we're going to start off with is we're going to actually going to start by driving the train, making it go forwards and backwards. We're going to do that by using a simple electric motor. So you can see here, I'm just going to make a space over here and I'm going to make a space underneath there to go and bring a controller pipe all the way down through to all these different things that we need to do. So you can see you just go on and simply use some pipes here. You can use enclosed pipes if you want to. You could use regular exposed pipes. Once again, completely up to you. The next thing is we want to take that power from our electric motor. However, I usually like putting it through some gearboxes first. I find usually two gearboxes is more than enough. Once again, this will be depending on your own situation, own scenario, and how quick and how much uh, power you need from that motor. Obviously, if your train is a little bit heavier or it's pulling more, um, more weight, you might need less or more of these gearboxes. So now once we've got that connected, we have electric motor, two gearboxes going into the train itself. Let's go and add a little bit of power so we can go and convert that to three to one. I'm going to leave this one as blank just so far, but we can tweak that up and down if we need more or less power. The next thing we need is of course some batteries. Now you can use small batteries, large batteries. This is completely up to you. I'm just going to go and take a few batteries and just add them to underneath this carriage. Just like this. Let's go and add five. There we go. Quite a few. Perfect. That should last us quite a while time. I'm going to get that all connected up. You can see here I'm just going and adding all the batteries up together. Pretty easy. And then we're going to go and get that connected up to our electric motor and our gearboxes at the same time. Next thing we're going to need is a way to control the train. Now it's up to you if you want to use a seat, uh, if you want to use a chair, you can use a padded seat, a driver's seat, up to you. It's going to use a simple pilot seat. We're going to place that down over here. That's going to allow us to go forwards and backwards because on the driver's seat we have a forwards and backwards. So a WS and, an, and we also have our up and down. So we can go and simply just grab our WS over here and that's going to go over to our electric throttle. We're going to go and put on our electric throttle. We want it to be consistent. We don't want it to revert back to default. So we can go and simply put it on a sticky throttle. 10% should be fine for us. If you want to, you can also add a dial here to tell you what your throttle is going to be. 
once you're actually driving out. So we're going to simply go and add a dial here and we're going to say that's going to be our throttle. Zero and the throttle goes all the way to one. Actually, let's put it on negative one because we can go backwards. That's the joy of using an electric motor here. We're going to go and put that there. If you want to, you can also go and connect another dial here, maybe for battery. So we can go and put another one here. We can say that's going to be our battery and that's going to tell us how much battery we have left in all of our batteries. We can also go get it connected up there. Make sure those last two things have some electricity and we're going to go and test that out now. Make sure it's actually working. We can go and spawn that in. Let's see our little electric motor here and check it out. So we got one battery, zero throttle. Let's go and put the throttle up to 0 0.5 and you can see we are moving. Let's put it in reverse, negative 0 0.8 and we're going in reverse. It's got more than enough power. Battery's going to last us quite a while too, which is quite nice. So next thing we need is we need a way to recharge those batteries. Now this is up to you on how you want to do this. I'm just going to be using a simple electric generator here. Uh, so we're going to use some small engines. So let's go and take a small engine. Oh, we'll use two of them. Why not? Okay, so we'll go and double up here. We we'll use two of those engines. Very nice. We'll go and get some. Let's go get a radiator. Now, if you're looking for a tutorial on how to build these generators, I have just done a video on it. So definitely go check that out. Um, it's all the details on how to build the microprocessor that we'll be using for this example. So we've got the coolant done. Uh, the next thing we need is of course some fuel and we need some exhaust. So fuel will set up. Let's just make sure we have fuel on both sides. Yeah, we do. So fuel will then bring that up just like that and we'll bring it up and across. We also have some exhaust, so we'll send the exhaust out the sides. We have some air, so we can also go and set the air, so we'll set that down. Just like so, perfect. And the last thing out is our actual power. So we can go and take that and we're gonna use a generator. So you can set this up however you want to. I'm just gonna build that up there, grab a generator and we're gonna face it towards the engine. Use some piping, go and get that connected up, and perfect. And then lastly is we're gonna take both of those power that we're getting from our generators, and that's gonna go into a medium-sized generator. Go and connect that up, bring it over here, bring it to the middle, and let's just simply go and put it over here, and we can go and get a generator. Get a medium sized generator for this example. You guys can change this up as you want to. This is just an example once again. Uh, we last thing we need is some fuel, so let's go get some fuel, fuel tank at least. We'll get a medium sized one. You can use a large, actually, yeah, let's use a large one. Why not? Make sure we have tons of fuel left, and uh, then we can just simply connect up the pipes to the fuel just like that. Go and grab our piping. And that engine's really set up. All done. Just make sure you obviously have electricity for everything. So we can go and connect electricity up. Just like that. And then I'll generate it down to our battery storage. Perfect. Now the nice thing is that with the previous video I did about the generator. Is we have a microcursor that actually goes and controls everything for us. So if we go and search for our generator controller just over here. Uh, we have, where is it? Yeah, let's take this one. Perfect. We can just place literally two of those down. That's going to do everything to control engines. So if we go and have a look at that, you can see we have our throttle. So throttle and throttle. We have our on off, on off, perfect. We also have our battery. So we'll connect that up to one of the batteries, connect that up to one of the batteries. RPS of the engine, perfect. RPS of the engine, great. And that's pretty much about it. This is going to generate its own electricity and you can check that by if we go and put another dial down here we can go and see what the watts is of the generator zero let's put it to 500 just in case we don't know how much watts we're going to produce and we'll connect that up there make sure that's got some electricity and in theory we should be fine go and spawn it in you'll see here if we go and jump on there everything's good watts nothing throttles nothing and batteries one if you use the tutorial I did to show you how to build those microprocessors, all you have to do is get this battery below 0.9 and you will notice that my generators will come on. So let's go and ride it for a bit. Increase our throttle. See, we are going quite quick. 
probably quicker than a jet train. Oh, there we go. You can see our generators just kicked on. Producing 20 watts of electricity. Great. Nice and easy. We can go and kill the throttle here. Go put it in full reverse. And then let's go and put it zero throttle. So watch our battery. It's going to go up now. I take a little bit of time because we're only producing 20 watts of power. You could obviously put some bigger engines here if you wanted to add some more gearboxes. Actually, I don't think I set the gearbox ratio. That possibly could be an issue. So let's go and bring it back. Let's just go and check our gearbox ratio. Yeah, let's go and give it some gears here. Three to one, three to one. Should be able to handle that. Uh, let's go test that out again. Roll it up again. See if we can use that battery. Yep, there we go. Go. Okay, that's better. We're producing 40 watts of power. Battery should be going up now. Perfect. 8, 9, and 90. So that's how you can go and have an electric diesel. Quite nice and easy. Uh, as I said, you probably want more outage on your generator than you are using. So, for example, you can see here. We're burning through our electricity, so you probably want to not use that much. Just need to find a good balance between what you're actually producing to what you're using. So you can see here, we're actually only at 0 0.16 throttle, so we're actually not using that much, which is quite good actually. The last thing is you probably want is some brakes. Now, I recommend having manual brakes and also some automatic brakes. Now, you can use a Pretty much anything you can use a throttle or you can use your chair you can see we can just take the up and down connect to the brakes just like that so that way our seat is controlling it but i want the brakes to be automatic i'm saying hey if there's no throttle from our actual seat i want the brakes to be on and to do that all you can do is we can go and check get a threshold gate this is where we'll need a threshold gate for we're going to take our throttle which is up and down uh ws sorry and we're going to go and say, hey, if the throttle is zero and zero, or let's say zero, negative 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, you could add another zero in there if you wanted to. Uh, if it's between that, actually, let's add another zero just in case. Okay. If the throttle is between that, we want the brakes to be on. So we want to apply a one to the brakes. So let's go grab a, so let's go and get an add that and we're gonna add that number that we have on there and we're gonna add it to a constant number get a constant number here go and we'll get a switch box too so we can pass that number through perfect so one is gonna go to on and we're gonna go and send that to add there. Threshold gate's gonna turn it on and then that's gonna go down to our brakes. So, seat controls the brakes directly, as you can see here. Then if this recognizes that there's zero throttle, it's then gonna turn the switch on, which the switch will then send a brake signal to the brakes and it adds it over to whatever we have on the seat. Quite simple, actually. Uh, once we have all that, we actually don't need to do anything else. Uh, we can adjust our seat if I want our throttle to be a little bit less fast. So we can put a five, why not? Okay. And now we can go test it out. So if we go in our seat here, you'll notice the brakes are turned on. Okay, and if we go and move it, okay, so you can see here, 0 0.1 brakes are on. If we go and increase up, brakes get taken off. And we can apply them manually, of course, like that. So you can see they're manually on, or I could take them off, and the train goes. If I go and reduce my throttle, 0.1, brakes get applied automatically, and we should come to a screening halt in a couple seconds. All right, so let's go and put it in reverse. Go back to terminal, and uh, let's go and here a bit and we'll put the brakes on and there's our train very simple uh, design very easy very 
very clean i think at least i don't know you guys let me know in the comments below what you think of this dine um you can obviously make it look prettier you can make it look worse you can make a box it's up to you but at least this isn't just jets thrown onto train tracks um that's the main thing here it's actually a proper train as i said i will be doing another video uh showing you how to do a slave master system with this exact same train so you can actually start hooking up multiple trains and getting them to control each other uh so i'll show you all that how to do it but uh hopefully this video was really nice and informative and it actually helps you guys so i think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and found it some entertaining and informative as always and we'll see you in the next one